Hello everyone, my name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle and we are going to be taking a look at a uh, few different shots uh, with Mocha Pro. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a little look at this one here. So we have our door footage and I want to do a bit of a uh, bit of touch up on this. I want to clean this door up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to stabilize this shot out so that instead of having to paint on a whole series of frames, I'm just going to paint on one frame and then propagate the rest of that stuff all the way out here. So the first thing I need to do is to stabilize that shot and create a track. So I'm going to create my little shape here and Mocha uses a planar tracker. It doesn't have any point trackers in it. So instead of just uh, tracking individual points and individual elements, what I'm doing is I'm defining a shape and I'm tracking that shape all the way through. I'm tracking that texture from one frame to another. And you notice I haven't changed any of the uh, parameters at all. I'm just going straight through the default parameters and that's uh, holding in quite nicely. So once I've got the, uh, the track sorted out there, let's come in and just uh, track backwards just a little bit, very nice and quickly. And what we should end up with here is we should end up with a, a good track that I can then start to uh, stabilize out. So let's take a, a quick look there. Actually, let's play it back normally. And you can see the shape has, uh, has held on quite nicely. If I turn on my quick stabilize, you can see that that is also coming in quite well. Now the quick stabilize is usually used for when you're doing uh, you know, the roto work just to sort of stabilize out and smooth out that sort of camera movement. If we want a full stabilize, we can come into the Mocha stabilized module and we can track all that up there. And you see this, just playing it back in, in real time, this will just give me a, a nice sort of smooth camera going through. If I want to stabilize that out 100%, I can just smooth out all motion and do actually maximum smoothing there as well. And that will show me whether or not my camera is now completely locked down with this track. And I think it is. So now let's come back over to my area here. And this is what the, uh, the stabilizer is all about. This is what the tracking data has uh, made for us. This is our surface. So this is the tracking data that's running underneath our shape data. The shape data itself isn't what is, uh, is forming the track. So our, uh, our surface here is what we can do to, uh, to add inserts. So we can check that out there. So we're just doing any sort of screen insert or uh, packs replacement, something like that. We can easily do that there. But the surface is also a whole load more than that. So in this case, I don't want to do a, uh, a screen insert. I'm just going to take this export out of this tracking data here. And we'll take a look. We can export this out to a whole number of different hosts, including uh, After Effects, uh, Nuke, uh, Quantel. Uh, but I'm, I'm taking this out to, uh, to After Effects just for a second. And I can save this to a separate file if we need to just uh, send it over to someone else. Um, or in this case, what I'm going to do is pop into After Effects and here's the unstabilized footage there. I could duplicate of this. Uh, I'm going to be using a script to, to bring in the, the data so I can do things a little bit different with it. This is the Mocha Import Plus from, uh, from Mammal World. So I'm just going to come to my Mocha track that I just tracked out. Come to my door here. And I can choose what I want to do with this track. So I can either do a corner pin for the inserts, move for match move, stabilize, stabilize out the camera. But this is the cool thing, I could do a stabilized pre-comp. And that's going to run around, and if I just play this through, it doesn't look any different. But what it's done is it's just simply taken off that image that I defined in, uh, in Mocha. So I've opened that up there. We've got a nice stabilized frame now that I can come in and start to, uh, start to do the touch-up on. So in this case, all I'm going to do is just do a very quick and dirty uh, sort of a clone over here just to tidy this up. But whether you're doing, you know, uh, touch up or 
adding stuff to it. The uh, principle is basically the same. So obviously this is uh, a lot faster than I would normally do this, but there we go. Boom. So if I play that through there in context, that now just maps that all the way through for us. So take a look at the actual shot. Just uh, round preview that out. You can see that just by doing one simple track to stabilize it out and then paint on one frame, I've managed to, uh, to clean it up quite nicely. So there are occasions though where actually I don't have to leave Mocha to do a lot of that sort of remove stuff. So um, if I open up, let's have a look at my tail here. Save my mail. We'll take a look at this footage here. We have uh, well, what's meant to be a nice vicious sort of dog, oh sorry, vicious wolf going through. But uh, it doesn't look very vicious at the moment. You've got uh, the tail here, sort of up and wagging, and all very happy. I don't know, yeah. Wolves don't do that. Wolves don't do that at all. So I'm going to remove the tail in Mocha and then put a new one in in After Effects. Uh, and the process for this is, is actually fairly straightforward. All I'm going to do is uh, create one little shape here that defines the background. And I'm just going to track this through. I'm not going to change any of the, uh, the parameters, just keep it as default. And you'll see that even though the, uh, the wolf dog thing went all the way through there, it didn't throw off the track at all. So, and that's, that's because the, the planar tracker is actually very resilient to that sort, of, uh, that sort of change. So now I've got my background track sorted out and we'll, we'll test that, just uh, do the quick, uh, quick stabilize there. And that's that's looking all right happy with that nothing bobbing about so uh, let's rename this background track so uh, the next thing i need to do is then define what i want to remove and that's going to be the the tail here so i'm going to do just a, a quick sort of a uh, sort of shape i don't have to get too detailed at this point it can be sort of you know garbage mask quality of roto work, don't have to get really, really deep down into it. And um, so now what I've, I can try and track that through, but that's not gonna work too well because it's articulating and moving about. So what I'm gonna do instead is use that background track to just kind of stabilize things out so I don't have to work quite as hard. So instead of having to fight both the camera movement and the movement of the, uh, the dog, I just have to sort the movement of the dog out uh, so now I can come along, let's just uh, name this one tail. So now I can come along and just, yeah, change, change this up a little bit. So I'll just happily walk this around. There we go. Cool. Again, accuracy at this stage is not necessary. So it's just, it's all going to be, all going to be fine. There we go. And we'll just uh, move that along this way. There we go, and I can even actually bring that down just a little bit more there, and then move that out. Boom. And hopefully that should cover most of that. Yeah, we've got a little bit there, there we go. So now I've defined the shape for the tail. I've decided, uh, defined the shape for the background. If I come into my remove here, I'm not gonna touch any of the parameters yet, just hit process so you can see what's going on. And it's gonna now take Let's turn this off. It's going to remove the, the, uh, the foreground that I defined from the background I defined. You see we've got a little bit of an area here and down here which haven't been removed. And the reason for that is very simply because I haven't made the background big enough. So now all I have to do is properly define what that background area is. Just move that out there and there and there. So move that down a little bit there as well. That should be all right. Now I'm coming, just reprocess that out, not make any other changes. And that's now pieced in the, the background from the other frames automatically. Um, so I'll, I can just, uh, actually we'll just process the rest of that through. And you see on a few of them, actually let's stop that there. Let's have the end frame, there we go. You see on a few of those things there, we've got a little bit of, uh, there we go something there, not quite, it's not quite right, not quite worked out. Um, 
but it's at that point where we can start to quickly change up the parameters. We can change how many frames it looks at before and after, add a little bit of uh, smoothing, bit of blending going on between there. And all I have to do, then just process that out again. And that should then hopefully come in and, uh, and sort that out. There we go. And if I haven't got the, the frame quite right there, then that's gonna, I'll just have to retract that in. But that's pretty much the theory for it there. Let's just uh, process the rest of those out. That should be, there we go, stop that there. And so we'll do one more frame back. There we go. And that'll be the end point. So you don't even need that, that'll be the end point there. Cool, so now I've got my uh, my tail removed, quite happily. Let's uh, turn that stabilize off. Now it's the job to actually come in and uh, put a new tail in. So let's uh, pop into After Effects and do that. There we go. So all of the time when I've been processing that stuff out in Mocha, what it's been doing is writing a file uh, in the background. To, to the disk. So I actually don't have to, um, to render out any more uh, files if I don't want to. Uh, I just have to come in and find my remove in my results, which is here. Bring that in. Bump that down. Uh, match the frame, frame 23, I think. Let's have a little look. Yeah. So I've got a little bit of nonsense going on there but you know that that will do we can always fix that at a later date uh, actually the other thing I need to do is make sure that my frame rate is right for the stills it's good when you're working on a demo system so uh, you always have to <laughs> work things out that aren't quite your own system there and let's uh, bung the tail in here so I've got just a tail it's just been drawn up in uh, in Photoshop so it's just a little Photoshop thing nice quick and easy Let's just bring that down there. And I could go in, I could track this up and you know do nice and clever things with it. But it's, to be fair, it's, it's actually, it's only a few frames long. So it's just as easy in this case, just to come in and actually manually just uh, bump that in with a few keyframes. So we don't have to get too, uh, too crazy about it. That's it. So let's bring that in, move that over a few more frames. That should be about right, bring that out. And then that's going to be our final frame. Cool, so we got the ads almost, almost fitting in. <laughs> there we go. Cool, that's good, good enough for now, I think. Because the, the biggest problem is, actually, let's turn on a bit of motion blur just to blur that out a little bit. It's amazing what you can hide with a bit of motion blur. Um, but the biggest problem we've got at the moment is obviously the foreground stuff is still cutting out over our tail. So what I need to do is then create up a couple of mask shapes just to, to bring that back in. Again, pop back into Mocha. And this stuff's dead easy to do. So all I'm gonna do, let's just go to the original here. All I'm going to do is uh, draw another little rough shape around the uh, the branch that I want to change up. There we go. Boom. And again, just, just track this through. Default settings one more time. And you see the planar tracker just uh, holds on tight to it and just tracks it through without any trouble whatsoever. Now, the cool thing is that the tracking data and the shape data are actually separate. So I can come in and make changes to the shape now uh, without upsetting the, uh, the, the tracking data. So I can bring this all the way in over here. I can even add in uh, new points if I want to. And because the, uh, the track is you know, separated out onto, a, uh, onto the plane of surface, I actually don't have to worry about messing up the track just by adjusting a few of the points. So we export out that shape data. We can take this out to, um, yeah, natively to a, to a whole load of uh, different applications, uh, including, yeah, Premiere, Nuke, um, uh, Combustion GMAR scripts. But actually, I'm just going to take this out to a uh, mocha shape for After Effects. Don't have to render it. Copy it to the clipboard. 
back into After Effects. I'm going to make a dupe of my background layer, put that over the top, and then I'm just going to come in, edit, paste Mocha Mart. Let's solo that out, and that's my quick, simple mask shape. And that's come in directly as uh, After Effects mask data. So I can still come in and sort of keyframe up the softness and change the uh, mask capacity. I can use uh, After Effects built-in motion blur stuff on this layer as well, uh, because it is essentially uh, an After Effects mask. So it's just helped to, to bring that in. I might even feather that out even more, just so we're not giving the game away. So you can see I've still got a little bit over on this side, and that's really, that's gonna be the same basic idea. So I'm gonna come in, uh, let's open up my tree stuff here, there we go. I can just take this, export out that shape data again. All visible layers, copy those to the clipboard so I can take out multiple layers at the same time. Uh, back into After Effects and paste those back in as well. Let's hit M for bringing up the masks, there we go. And let's just set these to add. Take a little look on those. So I've got all my masks now poking out over the top. And again, they're still uh, After Effects native masks. So at any point, I can come in and just feather these out individually. And that'll sort of work out. So quite easily, we've got a, uh, within about what, 10, 10 minutes, I'd say. You know, we've got the, the basic idea uh, for this, this tail remove and replace. So we've gone from, actually there we go, so the tail needs obviously a bit of animating up. So you get the idea. But we've gone from a happy dog, shaking its tail, wagging its tail, woof woof, to the beginnings of an angry evil wolf. There we go. Arr. So we've got happy and not so happy, right? But we can do loads of other stuff with the um, with the masks as well, because the, the one of the big strengths about uh, Mocha Pro is how it operates within you know pretty much every other major bit of software that you're you're going to be working with, um, and we can even do things like well let's actually open up another project. Uh, where are we here? Yeah, we can even export out this uh, this mask data. If we if we can't export the shape data out natively, we can render these maps out so that we can start to um, uh, start to work with them in other applications anyway. Let's uh, just come back in here, let's just color code these up a little bit. So I've got let's turn all all of my maps on here for a second. So I've got the beginnings of a uh, of a more complex roto coming up and a lot of these rotor shapes have been uh, you know they're, they're based off of a number of smaller tracks that I was working on here let's color code these tracks up so you can see what I'm talking about so I've tracked some of these objects here just using the planar tracker and then linked those shapes to those tracks just to help speed up the roto process but one of the things we can do if I want to take this out to uh, to resolve for example Resolve can't, uh, at the moment, natively um, read the, the, the shape data that we could in After Effects, but we can render out these shapes to create a, uh, a track map. So I can take these all out as a, as a sort of grayscale uh, TIFF sequence, or actually image sequence here, uh, all quick time moving. And if I pop into Resolve now, let's uh, turn this in, there we go. So if I pop into Resolve, I've imported that black and white mask here, or the black and white map here as a, as a track map. And it's come in with the motion blur, as you'd hope it would do. So now, what I can do, if I reset the uh, all these nodes, there we go. So now what I can do is I can add a map and use that as a track map. So if I just wanted to do a correction just on the the area that I was uh, I'd rotoed in, then I can easily do that. And these work as well, in, obviously in conjunction with the 
uh, the regular resolve tools as well. So we can like pull keys and uh, and use the other um, the other sort of shapes that are native in resolve in addition to our uh, Mocha roto shapes. But this this also goes one step uh, one step further as well, because what we can do is we can start to color code areas of the image as well. So say for example, I wanted to do one correction just on the bag, another correction on the, uh, on the legs and on the guy, uh, another correction on the, on the hands or the skin or something that I've, I've got there. What we can easily do is color code this stuff up in, uh, in Mocha first. So I can make the bag completely red, I can make the leg completely green, and if I wanted to, actually, I could even come in and do like a, a just the, the knee or something, just a, another little color, another blue here. So we've created an RGB um, render out here. So if I go to export rendered shapes, I can now export out all the visible by the matte color. So I mean, it's going to take on those colors that I've defined over there and export those out. So now when we bring those over into Resolve, and uh, actually, I'll show you that you have to bring them in a, in a not in a special way, but you just have to, to bring them in in a, a, a certain way. Let's uh, come in here, come to Ben IBC. There we go, rendered mats. And you have to add these as a map. You don't just add them into the media pool, you add it as a map. And by doing that, you get this special icon in the bottom here. And it means that when we're in here in the, uh, in the color room, if I uh, actually let's just come in and add it as a track map, it pops up in my track map file here. So now I've got just the Luma stuff popping in. It's not quite what I wanted. So if I match that in now to the red instead, you can see it's only doing the correction on what I had colored in red in Mocha. And I can add another couple of, uh, another couple of nodes in here connect the green to this one, invert that over, and then I can just do, yeah, correct, correcting only the stuff that was green on that one, and then connect the blue in here. So I can do another third secondary just on that specific area as well. And these are all being pulled from the same external map. But just because we color coded them in Mocha first, so the red, green, blue, means we've got access to them in, uh, in a different way in, inside Resolve. So other things that we can do here, if I just uh, let's cancel that out, if I open up a new project here and not save. Uh, another thing that we've got here is, uh, well, let's have a little look at this one here. Let's open this one up. Uh, yes, let's overwrite that is we can, we can use the planar tracker to easily track um, objects that actually are, can be a little, bit, uh, a little bit trickier or a bit more obscured in, uh, in certain places. So we have a look here. Our, our uh, actor's head goes through pretty much all of this shot here. But because I'm using a planar tracker, I'm not tracking in an individual point. I'm tracking in a, uh, actually an, an area instead. So what I can do, if I can define that area there, and this will be my background track, and I can come in and create another shape that I can use as just a track mat inside of, uh, inside of Mocha. So let's just do a simple one for the head there. Head track mat. Go. Cool, so now if I um, take a look at this and take a look at the map that I've got going on there, you can see that only this area here is going to be used for the track. So as I track this through, I can uh, actually, let's just bring that up a little bit. There we go. It shouldn't matter too much, but just for, for the sake of good order. As I track that through, there we go, it's starting to catch a little bit as we're not using some of that area there. But as we track that through, it's using that track map there to, uh, to identify areas of the image that it shouldn't be tracking. 
So now if I go back and retract that area, you can see that's nice and steady. So whereas, uh, let's just stabilize that out a little bit. And you see just we, even with the quick stabilize, you can see that that's, that's going a lot steadier than it was, to, uh, was doing before. And that's just a simple case of adding a track mat to another, uh, to another track that we've got here. So I can happily export out that tracking data, uh, just as transform data here. Copy that to the clipboard. Pop into After Effects. Let's have a look here. And let's, uh, let's find a sky, shall we? Uh, what have we got? We in a sunset -y mood? Yeah, why not? There we go, do a sunset. And what I'll do there is just paste, literally edit, paste, or uh, command or control V and that paste, that's pasted in that tracking data for us there. So I can do a really quick simple uh, simple key on this. Let's do a quick Luma key. Nice and very, very, very quick and dodgy on this one. There we go. And let's just uh, yeah move this down just a wee bit. And we've just within a few seconds, we've got our little, well, the basis for our sky replacement. Obviously we're gonna to want to color correct that up a little bit, add a little mask in here, but hey, we can do that. Of course we can. Let's come in, let's uh, turn this off. Simple, again, recycling the, uh, the, the, the tracks we've already done. Let's turn this off here. And I call this one my, uh, let's call this one side panel. Just link that one now to the, uh, where is it? To my background track. And that should fit in quite nicely. Good enough anyway. So now what I can do is export out that shape data, copy that to the clipboard, and then uh, move that into, into After Effects here. And then again, just edit, paste the mocha mask in there, and then do what I need to do with it. So subtract that. No, I don't want to do that, actually. Let's put that into another layer. Keep that up, there we go. Got the Maluma key on there, don't want that. Or actually, hang on. This could be even better using, um, there we go, come to my effects down here. I've got a little compositing option here with uh, CC2014. Let's uh, add that in here. I can now use the uh, the masks just on the um, just to, to do something on this one, this one here. So what I could do is just apply a, uh, a Luma key just to one specific area if I wanted to. Uh, so if I in invert that there, turn that on. Actually, you can see that's now cutting that out from a Luma key. Cool. So the um, one other thing I wanted to show you actually is just uh, while we're here, is also how we can take that stuff out or just how robust actually, not that one, not that one, not that one. Got a few little things to look through. There we go. We'll take a, a little look at this. And we can start to use uh, the planar tracker to track stuff that would be otherwise quite tricky to, uh, to track with just regular point trackers again. So stuff here where the lighting's changing all the way up, or it's going, you know, we've got a rack focus coming in here. So instead of having to track, you know, one point, or even just track one shape, what I can do is I can track a, uh, a series of smaller shapes. So I can come in here and track that one up there. Uh, I can add another shape now to the, uh, to the thing. And so long as it's actually staying on the same plane, which it should do about here, I can add multiple shapes to the same object. So now I'm only tracking through this one layer, but it's 
our plane is made up of these three separate areas. So let's just track that through quickly. There we go, and we'll track that one backwards. And we should see that even as things start to go a little bit out of focus, or a lot out of focus, then we should still be getting a decent track out of that. Got a bit of a shift going on here, but if we do that, then we'll just uh, we'll just retrack. You know, no big hassles whatsoever. So we'll take that. We'll track that one backwards. There we go. So that should be a bit more stable than it was. There we go. Yeah. So you see now, even though this shape is moving, the track itself. It's still going to be rock solid because our track is being put or being hidden on this surface here. So it's this surface that we can use for doing, um, you know, the inserts and all that other sort of stuff. But we use it here to just check that everything is matching up quite nicely, and uh, and it is, and it is. So now, once we've got our track sorted out, uh, we'll call this one fence track. I can then very quickly very very quickly create up our proper roto shape and then link that to the uh, link that to the track I've just done so it's in this way that we can if you're doing sort of more complex roto work or even not even complex roto work but if you're doing any sort of roto work you can very very easily create up some quite complex mats with a minimum of work so you can see here everything's sitting in quite nicely. And I can add softness to that edge as well if I want to. And then we can just take it out. Uh, just really quickly showing you, we do take it out to uh, Adobe Premiere as well now. Just that selected layer, copy that to the clipboard, into Premiere. Yeah, and with um, CC2014, all of the effects now also have sort of built-in mask capabilities. So that's, the original sort of yeah boring masks but if I right click and paste on this I can now also bring in my mocha mask straight away and again this is nat a native uh, this now treated as a native premiere mask so all of the stuff that I want to do in premiere you know with the mask controllers feather it up expand it contract it uh, change the opacity change the composite mode and do all of that all of that sort of stuff directly within uh, premiere so we've actually been through quite a lot in, uh, in a very short space of time. Um, we came in, we did a bit of paint touch up work on our, on our door here. So we came in, did that nice and easily using a uh, stabilized pre-comp, lovely. And we also started to get a bit of a work in progress of our, uh, of our little dog, turning it into a vicious wolf and we took a look at how we can start to do yeah some sort of uh, sky replace and get more complex tracks done uh, within within mocha and taking that out not only to uh, to after effects and premiere but also how we can take out those that shape data to davinci resolve as well so uh, if you've got any questions come up and ask me afterwards um, if you want to hang around we've got martin taking over He's going to be uh, doing some of the other modules and stuff in, in Mocha that I didn't get a chance to uh, talk about. Things like the uh, Feely Camera Solve, the Lens module uh, for dealing with lens distortion, and a load of other fun stuff. So uh, thanks a lot. My name's Ben Brownlee, and I'll uh, see you again soon. Thank you.